Well, it's time for another lecture. Today's topic will be political parties. Essentially, this lecture will have two main focal points. First, we'll, it'll cover a brief history of political parties in the United States. Uh, but most of the time, it will identify the core issues that divide the Republican and Democratic parties. We'll explore several different issues. Uh, and hopefully you'll come to a better understanding of the political system as a result. As a result, we'll start with a little bit of history. Throughout American history, our political system has been dominated by a two-party system. But um, a lot of people are unfamiliar with the fact that the Democratic and Republican parties um, are, have not been the only political parties throughout American history. In the 1790s, going back to that era, there were two political parties. One was called the Federalists, the other was called the Jeffersonian Republicans. Sometimes they were also referred to as the Democratic Republicans. We've had a range of other political parties uh, over the years as well, but for the last 150 years or so, um, the Democrats and Republicans have been the two major parties. Here we see the two first presidents from our major parties of today. On the left, there's Andrew Jackson. He was the first Democrat elected to the White House. And Abraham Lincoln was the first Republican. The man shown here was Thomas Nast. He was a journalist and a political cartoonist who used symbols to represent both the Democratic and Republican parties. Nast was a Republican, and so he wanted to portray his political party in a positive light. Elephants have often been a symbol of strength and intelligence, and so elephants are actually connected to the Republican Party, and it goes back to these political cartoons of Thomas Nast. Nast wanted to portray Democrats in a negative light, and so he linked donkeys, which were often referred to as jackasses, to the Democratic Party. Both of these symbols stuck over the years. I think that's enough of the history. I'd like to spend most of the time in this lecture addressing today's political parties. I've shown this map before, but it identifies the totals from the 2020 presidential election campaign. The red states indicate states won by candidate Donald Trump. The blue states indicate states won by Joe Biden. As you can see, there are, are a lot of blue states on in the Northeast and on the West Coast and even in the Great Lakes, whereas the middle part of the country has a lot of red. So if people say you're from a blue state, well, Michigan is identified as blue here because Joe Biden won the state of Michigan in the 2020 election. Here we see the front pages of the political parties' websites. On the left, it's the Republican Party website. Notice there's a lot of red in it. On the right, we see the Democratic Party's website. If you want more information on either of these political parties, you can access their websites just by a quick Google search. So the approach I'd like to take would be to fill in this chart. Um, we'll look at who, so the role of government, and then several issues. Um, if you notice, sometimes, uh, you know, one time I'm going to start with conservative Republicans, and then on the next issue I'll start with liberal Democrats, and hopefully I'll provide equal treatment to each of the parties. We'll see how well I do with that. We'll start with the Republican Party. Many Republicans today look to a former president of the United States as a hero. That would be Ronald Reagan. Another former Republican president is shown here, George W. Bush. Our more, most recent Republican president was Donald Trump. But I thought I should also identify one other individual. The top ranking Republican in Congress is shown here. That's Mitch McConnell, the minority leader of the Senate. There are many other prominent Republicans, but here we can see top, several top Republicans include President Reagan, George W. Bush, Donald Trump, and Mitch McConnell. We'll explore the Democrats next. I'd like to identify four prominent Democrats next. 
First, we see former President Barack Obama, who served from 2009 to 2017. Next is Nancy Pelosi. She is the Speaker of the House, the top Rep Democrat in the House of Representatives, and the highest ranking woman ever in Congress. Next, we see President Joe Biden who was just elected in 2020. I did want to identify one other individual. This is AOC or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You may be familiar with her because she's gotten a lot of press in the last couple of years. Again, if we go back to that chart, we see the names of several prominent liberal Democrats. Next, we'll explore how each party views the role of government. Democrats believe the government should be very active to help the American people achieve the American dream. One way for that is to have a national health care plan, like the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. Programs like unemployment, WIC, food stamps, Head Starts, things like that, help people in times of need. And so many Democrats think that those programs should be expanded. Democrats also are often talking about free community college for college students and the expansion of financial aid. Now, these programs cost a lot of money. How are you going to pay for them? Well, raise taxes on the rich is the solution that many liberal Democrats support. If you're earning over $250,000 a year, maybe you should be paying more in taxes, a liberal Democrat would argue. Conservative Republicans would take a different approach. They would argue the government's not part of the solution. The government's part of the problem. Get the government off the people's back. There are too many regulations. There are too many taxes right now. Obamacare, that affordable health care program, okay, it's far too costly. People need to rely on themselves and pull themselves up by their own bootstraps and not depend on the government. What, you're going to pay for these programs by taxing rich people more? Wait a minute. Don't we live in a capitalist society? And isn't that actually punishing people who are successful? No, 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 no. A conservative Republican would disagree with that approach. The next issue would be abortion. The next issue would be abortion. A conservative Republican would argue that in most, just about all cases, abortion should be illegal. Now, I wanted to point something out here. On the issue of abortion, a sophisticated description of it would not simply say one party's pro-choice and one party's pro-life. For example, President Bush had a strong anti-abortion record. However, he also allowed for some exceptions. If mom's life is in danger, or if mom became pregnant as a result of rape. Those were two exceptions that President Bush supported. A liberal Democrat would take a different approach and argue that in most, just about all cases, abortion should be a legal option. Again, I think we need to move beyond a simple description of pro-choice versus pro-life. And Nancy Pelosi's position would give a good example. She has a strong support, uh, a record of support of abortion rights, but they would not be absolute. Nancy Pelosi would not support a late-term abortion or an abortion like, let's just say, in the eighth month if a woman woke up and just said, you know what, I think I don't want to have this baby anymore, and if she was fine, she would not support abortion, and it's not legal anywhere in the United States under those set of circumstances. Here we see the chart again, and I just wanted to point out it, it is important to move beyond a simple pro-choice versus pro-life uh, description of abortion. Here are three more issues that divide Democrats and Republicans, starting with gay rights. Liberal Democrats support equal treatment for homosexuals under the law. For example, if a gay couple wanted to adopt children, they would support that. If a, um, someone was fired from their job because they were gay, they would say, hey, that's an unlawful firing. Uh, liberal Democrats uh, worked uh, to try to make sure that homosexuals were allowed to serve openly in the military. That's changed now. Um, same with gay marriage. Uh, liberal Democrats were the ones who uh, pushed to try to legalize gay marriage. Conservative Republicans support traditional family values. And a traditional family is headed by one man and one woman. 
they would be completely opposed to violence against homosexuals. But uh, many conservative Republicans uh, have supported a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage uh, because they believe that it takes away from traditional marriage by having gay marriage. The next issue is gun control, and I want to start with the concept first. All right, so I have a couple of memes here because I want to throw out two extreme positions. Democrats are not a bunch of gun grabbers who want to take away everybody's guns, so throw that perspective out. Also, you need to throw out another extreme. Not all Republicans are a bunch of gun nuts stockpiling weapons in order to wait because they think that the government's coming after them. So please throw out both of those extremes because neither is a position taken by the Democratic Party nor the Republican Party. When it comes to gun control, conservative Republicans would take the position that they would resist additional regulations on gun ownership. There are enough restrictions in place already. What kind of restrictions would Republicans tend to oppose? Well, um, many Republicans are supported by the National Rifle Association uh, and the NRA, and many Republicans, um, are uncomfortable with expanded background checks, and they're uncomfortable with extended waiting periods. Um, some people have talked about an assault rifle ban. Republicans would be opposed to that. Uh, and they also would be uncomfortable with limits placed on high-capacity magazines for uh, um, firearms. Liberal Democrats would take the opposing point of view and would support additional regulations on gun ownership. There are a range of interest groups that promote more gun control. One would be the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence, and it's shown here. Um, and again, Democrats would tend to support the ideas that are listed here. These are the same ones that were on the other slide. So I just want to reinforce, if you're trying to explain this issue of gun control, um, try to offer some examples. Uh, and it's more than just one side wants to take away people's guns and another side wants to promote gun ownership. It's more sophisticated than that. Next topic will be the minimum wage. Liberal Democrats support an active government to try to help people achieve the American dream and believe that the federal government should become involved and should raise the minimum wage. The minimum wage can be a little more complicated than most people think. Um, a lot of people work for minimum wage and it's not just teenagers. Uh, minimum wage jobs don't keep up with inflation often, a liberal Democrat would argue. Therefore, the government needs to come in and help that help the American people by raising the minimum wage. If people are making more money, well, then they're going to pay more money in taxes. That means the government will have more revenue. Also, if people are making more money, they will spend more money, and this will help to add a multiplier effect or spark the economy, therefore making additional jobs. A conservative Republican would disagree with this approach and would argue the government shouldn't be involved in establishing workers' wages. Instead, wages should be determined by the free market. A conservative Republican would say, hey, get the government out. Don't have the government establish some sort of an arbitrary minimum wage because there's a built-in incentive for businesses to, uh, to have a high wage. The best way to attract a good employee is to pay them a good wage. Employers want good employees. There's a built-in incentive for them to have high wages. The government shouldn't step in. The market will determine the proper wage. By the way, if you raise minimum wage, this is going to lead to inflation. The cost of a hamburger at McDonald's or in another restaurant or a Coke or whatever it may be will lead to inflation, and employers will make less money. Therefore, they're going to have to lay off workers, and this will lead to higher unemployment. So this issue of minimum wage is complicated. Uh, economists can be split on this in many ways, and the two parties also split on the issue of minimum wage. I'd like to explore two more issues that divide Democrats and Republicans. 
conservative Republicans would argue that increased regulations dealing with the environment would place an undue burden on businesses and would resist those regulations. They would support expanded drilling in Alaska and in areas like the Gulf of Mexico, uh, drilling for oil. Uh, they would also be more likely to question human impact on climate change. I'd like to offer a little more detail on Republicans in the environment as well as Democrats here in a minute. Conservative Republicans would argue that those environmental rules which were put into place or they're enforced by the EPA, they really hurt businesses and so they've cut back on many of those regulations and the budget for the EPA. They would argue that we should increase our drilling in the U.S because it ends our dependence on foreign oil. We need to focus on fossil fuels because that's a cheap access to um, energy uh, and we have an abundance of that in the United States. And Vice President Mike Pence has addressed the issue of, of global warming and he's described global warming at times as a myth. Liberal Democrats would want the government to be more active to expand environmental regulations. They would support tax incentives to businesses who look to alternative energy to replace fossil fuels. Again, if we can explore uh, this in a little bit more detail, uh, liberal Democrats would argue that things like the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, those environmental regulations improve life in the United States and they would support the regulations of the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, they would focus on alternative energy like solar, wind, geothermal, things like that. And liberal Democrats are more likely to accept the scientific consensus that humans are impacting climate change. Civil rights and women's rights are next. I want to start with one concept. Both parties support equality. But they would take a different approach to determining well, and to protecting equality. Liberal Democrats support equality and want the government to be active and would argue the government isn't doing enough to protect civil rights. The civil rights movement hasn't gone far enough. They would point to the increase in the last decade or so uh, of the hate crimes against people because of their religion, because of their race, uh, and say the government isn't doing enough. The government needs to do more. Conservative Republicans support equality, but believe that the actions of the government in the past have gone too far. Affirmative action, one of those solutions from the past, um, it causes more problems than it solves, and it's discrimination against whites, particularly white men. Sexual harassment cases have gotten too out of hand. Get the government out. Back in the 1950s, the 1960s, legislation was put into place that outlawed or prohibited discrimination. Those laws are still in place today. They should be enforced. We don't need additional laws today. It's already illegal to discriminate based on race. So those are several issues that divide Democrats and Republicans. I've got a few concluding remarks next. So what you want to be able to do after having watched this presentation is you want to be able to write an essay and your essay should be able to explain how each party views the so-called role of government and then pick any three additional issues discussed in the lecture, explain each party's position, and then evaluate which party you agree with the most. Well, that's all for today. I hope you learned something new. And ideally, what I want you to be able to do now is to go to a voting booth with a little bit of background to be able to make your choice, whether it's voting Republican or voting Democrat, voting for the person, voting for the party. It doesn't matter, but hopefully this will give you some ideas that will help you make decisions when you vote in the future. Have a great day, everybody.